So how do you treat a patient of hyponatremia? Patients with chronic hyponatremia usually will be danger of developing osmotic demyelination syndrome if the correction is more than 8 to 10 milliequivalents within first 24 hours or more than 18 milliequivalents within 48 hours. So we don't know which patients will be developing ODS, that is osmotic demyelination syndrome. But there are certain group of people who can easily develop and who can easily develop ODS, particularly in patients with chronic hyponatremia. So uh, response to treatment such as hypertonic cell and isotonic is highly unpredictable in these cases. So hence frequent monitoring of sodium is always, see always whenever you are giving a sodium cor correction, try to measure your sodium levels as much frequently as possible. Okay. So these are the US and European guidelines. I don't want to go deep into this, but I just want to tell you something like in case of acute or symptomatic hyponatremia, you can go with a bolus of 3% NaCl that is 100 ml over 10 minutes into three times as needed. So severe symptoms you can give bolus of uh, as per European guidelines you can give a 3% NS that is 150 ml over 20 minutes. So in case of severe symptoms you can directly go with 3% NS if it is acute and symptomatic patient. In chronic first try to do a fluid restriction and then you can try if if the if if the patient is not improving with the fluid restriction then you can go with demeclocyclone or Vaptons. You all know Vapton is a vasopressin antagonist. Okay. Hypovolemic hyponatremia always correct with isotonic saline. And hypervolemic hyponatremia, as you all know, it's always a fluid restriction. But always remember, don't jump into Vaptons. Whenever you are giving Vaptons, that is a toll Vapton or Pony Vapton, which is a vasopressin antagonist, just remember that you need to rule out the fluid status of the patient. If you are giving the vasopressin antagonist in a fluid depleted patient, that is in a hypovolemic patient, it can worsen your hyponatremia. Okay, and uh, this is about the 3% NS. So always remember drugs and conditions that are associated with acute hyponatremia, it's always the post-operative phase and TERP, as you all know, TERP is the main cause, particularly in neurological procedures, that is trans, transsectional urethral resection of prostate, transurethral resection of prostate, that is a TERP. So in cases of that, because we give a lot of fluids during the time of TERP, uh, we use glycine, we use mantle during the time of TARP. Because of the hypervolemic, there will be a lot of uh, dilution. As a result, it will cause dilutional hyponatremia. And polydipsia, exercise, MMDS, and MDMS, colonoscopy preparation, cyclophosphamide, oxytocin, and terlipresin and vasopressin, all these cause hyponatremia. Okay. So the treatment for SIADH, as we have discussed, first line will be fluid restriction. The second line, you can go for demiclocycline, urea, or Vaptans. Hypovolemic, always fluid restriction is the first line as per the US guidelines. But as per the European guidelines, you have to go with isotonic saline or balanced crystallite solutions. Better to go with the isotonic saline because you can increase the sodium too. And hypervolemic, always a fluid restriction or weapons. And correction, uh, to easily remember for you are this thing, to easily remember, always if you want to correct a hyponatremia, around 10 to 12 milli equivalents per liter. Always remember, it's patient body weight into total body water and the difference of the sodium. That is like, uh, if at all, if the patient is around 60 kgs, okay, you can give half, you can give, I mean, you can give a 3% NS at 30 ml per hour. Understand, if, if the patient is around 80 kgs, you can go even up to 40 ml per hour of 3% NS. This is an easy rough way to remember. You can give half of the patient's body weight in ml per hour in order to correct a sodium of around 10 to 12 millimoles per liter per day. Okay, this is the easy method to remember. The other one will be your total body weight into difference of sodium. That is a 0.6 into patient's body weight into the estimate, uh, the lab sodium minus the, uh, the, the targeted sodium. Okay. So this is called Adrog Medias formula through which we find out the change in the serum sodium. So infusate sodium plus infusate potassium minus serum sodium by total body water plus one. The infusate sodium is, for example, if you are giving NS, okay, normal sodium, your sodium will be around 150 milli equivalents. So you put it as infusate sodium, 150 plus infusate potassium is zero in a normal NS minus serum sodium. That is a, your lab sodium by total body water. That is your 0.6 into body weight plus one. So you'll get the change of sodium. So what does that indicate is, if you give that much amount of fluid, the amount of serum sodium will be around 10 to 12 milliequivalents. That means to correct it 
around 10 to 12 milliequivalents you have to give that much of sodium okay so the urine to electrolyte ratio serum electrolyte ratio indicates anti diuretic or aqueretic phase this is to know whether uh, how much the fluid has to be restricted per day to increase the serum sodium so for example urine sodium plus potassium by plasma sodium this is the formula you can remember it as urine sodium by plasma sodium by serum sodium because the potassium is almost negligent it's around 3 to 4 only so ratio more than 1 you have to restrict the fluid of around less than 500 ml per day 500 to 700 ml per day if ratio is equal to 1 less than 1 it is less than 1 liter per day this is the fluid restriction okay restrict all fluid intake not just water please remember it restrict all fluid intakes and aim for a fluid restriction that is 500 ml per day below the 24 hour urine volume so that's why you need to maintain your input output chart very strictly okay do not restrict sodium or protein intake unless indicated so predictors of likely failure as we have discussed fluid restriction may fail if there is a high urine osmolality that is more than 500 milli osmoles per kg and as per the formula sum of the urine sodium plus potassium exceeds the serum concentration serum sodium count that is urine sodium plus potassium more than serum sodium and 24 hour urine volume less than 1500 ml per day and increase in serum sodium concentration less than 2 in 24 hours on a fluid restriction of less than 1 liter per day that means you are restricting 1 liter of fluid your serum sodium concentration if it is increasing less than 2 millimoles that means this is a likely failure of your fluid restriction so this is what we have discussed already this is the osmotic demyelination syndrome which occurs due to the more of the water gain and radic and due to for the radic rapid adaptation what happens is there will be loss of sodium and potassium chloride and in the slow adaptation as i said earlier there will be osmotic granules so automatically the rapid correction of hypotonic solution usually worsens this there will be more of water retention which will actually cause the osmotic demyelination syndrome and the population at risk as uh, i told you earlier this is a slide usually hyponatremia with serum sodium less than 120 of more than 48 hours duration or hospital acquired hyponatremia with a known duration of more than 48 hours these are the patients who can actually develop ods more these patients are at more risk so kindly follow up your sodium levels and increase the sodium increase the vigilance in the patients like if the serum sodium concentration is less than 105 or a hypokalemic or an alcoholism malnutrition and advanced liver disease these are the patients where you need to because these are the patients where the osmotic demyelination syndrome will worsen because they already have a problem with the brain okay so serum correction should be only about 4 to 8 millimeter millimoles per liter per day with a lower goal of around 4 to 6 millimoles per liter per day if the risk of ods is high not to exceed more than 8 millimoles okay for normal risk it is 10 to 12 okay so if you are corrected excessively how do you manage it so serum sodium more than 120 intervention unnecessary serum sodium less than 120 replace water losses are admitted desmopressin uh, most of the cases you see it in uh, SIDH component or cerebral salt wasting syndrome when you have a CNS tumors when you correct it with your 3% SLN okay and withhold the next dose of Vaptans because Vaptans are as we as we have discussed Vaptans actually increase the sodium so we have to withhold the next dose of Vaptan and consider administration of high dose glu glucosteroids for 24 to 40, 48 hours following the excessive correction this is how we need to correct the patients if we feel that we have or i mean uh, uh, over corrected your sodium levels so it's a uh, desmopressin to prevent further water losses and replace water orally or 5 percent dextrose in water intravenously and recheck sodium hourly and continue therapy infusion until reduced to goal so vaptans see Vaptans, uh, usually we use Vaptans. Most of the times I have seen most of the uh, physicians are in emergence. As soon as you see a hyponatremia, immediately they start Vaptans. So don't use Vaptans in acute hyponatremia. First rule out whether it is a uvolemic or a hypervolemic hyponatremia and don't only you start Vaptans. So Vaptans, just remember single point, Vaptans are not at all indicated for a patient with hypovolemic hyponatremia. It's only considered in case of uvolemic hyponatremia or a hypovolemic hyponatremia that too when resistant to fluid restriction okay that is as per us guidelines but as per european guidelines regardless of level or response to the fluid restriction you can start on vaptans okay and starting dose of 12 vaptan is 15 mg and first day and dose can be titrated up to 30 mg and 60 mg okay see these are the considerations exclude hypovolemic hyponatremia do not use in conjunction or immediately after other treatments for hyponatremia 
monitor serum sodium closely. Fluid restriction should not be implemented to avoid overcorrection due to vigorous aquaresis. And common side effects are dry mouth, thirst, increased urine frequency, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, and orthostatic hypertension. Because as you know, as suppression, it already retains the ADH. So as a result, the ADH suppression will be there and more of uh, urine will be lost. Okay. So if you if you see, this is a take-home message. When uh, you consider treating a patient with a hypotonic, hypo, I mean hypotonic hyponatremia. So if there are severe neurological symptoms, this is just a gist. If there are severe neurological symptoms, kindly consider your 3% NS. If it is not severe, then look for the other diagnosis. Okay. If it is congestive heart failure or a cirrhosis, don't give any fluids. No salt or saline, no NS. So you need to go for a fluid restriction. If it is an SIADH, don't give saline because there is already an inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So if it is a CNS pathology, then consider using hypertonic saline instead of fluid restriction because why because it, it may always be associated with the cerebral salt wasting syndrome so you need to rule out whether it is a SIADH or a cerebral salt wasting syndrome so if you feel a SIADH volumic patient with cns pathology rule out your volume status and then you can go ahead with your hypertonic saline instead of fluid restriction because it's a cerebral salt wasting if it is an SIADH consider fluid restriction Consider salt, salt tablets if etiology is not quickly reversible, that is your weapons. And if urine, urine sodium is, urine osmolality is more than 500, consider adding a loop diuretic. Okay. And then do not restrict any type of fluid. If there is any volume depletion, then go for a normal saline. And if there is a primary polydipsia, as I discussed earlier, patient will be taking more of water. So you need to reduce your normal fluid intake. Particularly, you see this primary polydipsia during the time of Ramjan. Uh, usually they will be going on fasting, taking a lot of fluids. In such cases, you see most of the times you can see a primary polydipsia or it may be a psych psychogenic uh, problem. So a small uh, on hypernatremia. Most of the times hypernatremia will be due to water loss. That is GI, renal loss due to diuretics or central or nephrogenic diabetes, as I discussed earlier, insensible and transdermal losses. So there will be loss of water. There will be loss of free water so that the sodium accumulates in the serum leading to the hypernatrium or the second thing is inadequate intake so limited access to water for example bedridden debilitated patients who cannot move so they don't take much of water or primary hypodipsia or hypothalamic lesions affecting the osmo receptor center and uh, other one is most of the times it will be hydrogenic like overcorrection with soda bicarbonate or a hypertonic saline or your weptan tablets all these things so this is how you Manage the hypernatremia. So hypernatremia, look whether it is hypervolemic or hypovolemic. Hypervolemic, as we have discussed earlier, most of the times it is due to sodium overload or a Cushing syndrome. So you stop the saline infusion and then if necessary to prevent the overload, give diuretics. If it is hypovolemia or eulemia, look if there is a ADH, look for ADH presence. If the ADH is present and urine osmolality is more, okay then there is a problem then you have to check at the urine volume okay if the adh is absent or ineffective then you have to look because it is a central cause adh is absent or ineffective it is a central cause then you have to look at the ddup desmopressin levels so that will that will actually rule you out between the central diabetes insipidus and the nephrogenic so if the adh is absent or ineffective you give a desmopressin dose and see whether the patient is improving or not if the patient is responding to desmopressin then it is a central diabetes if the patient is not responding to desmopressin, then it is a nephrogenic diabetes. Okay, and urine osmolality more than 800, if the ADH is present, then look at your urine volume. So if urine volume is less than 800 ml per day, that means there is a problem with the water intake or increased insensible losses. That is rather than the urine, that is other, other parts. That is because urine volume is less than 800 ml day. That means he is losing water from somewhere else other than in the urine. So that is you replace the free water. Uh, as per your adrox formula again put it in your adrox formula you can replace the water accordingly if the urine volume is more than 100 more than one liter per day then it most probably may be the osmotic diuresis so you need to replace the free water again you need to replace the water and reduce the rate of the enteral feeds also okay so this is how you manage the hyponatremia thank you